Now, normally when we do a review, we record it, we give our ratings, and that's it. We kind of walk away from it and leave it alone. Sometimes we change our mind about a film, but we'll seldom come in and give a rating on that particular review. However, in this case, for Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief, we have been up all night. Uh, I took a nap today, woke up, started editing the review for this movie. And the more I listened to what I had to say about it, the more angry I got, or at least irritated with the movie. In particular, one character in this film, a character named Grover, who's a, a satyr, which is, you know, half human, half goat mythological creature. Now, what made me so upset about this is that it, it, it encompasses everything I hate about black sidekicks. In a story where all of your other main characters are given the stature of being charismatic or heroic, he's there to be the wisecracking, subservient comedy relief, right down to the point where they even make him a funny animal, a goat. Meanwhile, all of your other main characters get to be gods and demigods, and if they are half animal, they get to be something like strapping centaurs. I, I know this is a heavy way to start this review, and this is not going to sit well with a lot of people, but I would feel worse if I didn't say anything about it. So the point is, I'm probably th giving this movie a lower rating than I have in the review that you're about to hear. But hey, don't let me spoil that for you. It's a fun review, and enjoy listening to it. We've been expecting you. The gods are real. My father's beside me. God of the seas. Percy Jackson and the Sorcerers, I mean the Lightning Thief. Now, now hold on. <laughs> you mean Percy Jackson and the Deus Ex Machina. Now let's, like, look, this is not Harry Potter, okay? Yeah, tell us about it. No, Harry Potter is a movie about a young boy who finds out his parents were wizards, and that gives him magical power, so he has to go to a special school to learn to use these powers, and then gets drawn into a plot much bigger than himself. Oh, wait. This, this is, <laughs> no, this is the story about a young boy whose father... Are, is a god which gives him magical powers, so he has to go to a camp to learn how to use his magical powers and then get drawn into hey, a, a, a thing much greater than himself. Now, come on. Harry Potter films start off being directed by Chris Columbus, and this... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shit. Oh, and you think that's bad? Look at the font on the title of this for the poster. <laughs> I mean, y'all are not having no shame about trying to get another Harry Potter series started uh, at all. Well, I, 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 one huge difference is that Harry Potter had a budget Whereas this was sort of like had somewhat of a budget, but not really. Yeah, no, I was watching this and I was saying this is a sci-fi channel movie, a Cartoon Network film that was generously given a big budget for monsters. Yeah, I mean, when when your opening special effect is when you look at it and go, damn, that sucks. <laughs> That's not a good start. <laughs> damn, what was opening effect? The title? The harpy? The, 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 the giant Poseidon walking around the bridge. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You mean that fl that wasn't a flashback I was having to Godzilla? Because for a minute there, I was like, "There's there's a big thing coming out of the water. There's a guy on the pier making googly eye, a guy on the pier making googly eyes." And I was like, "Wait, I've seen this." Well, I mean, it's it's great for Ray Harryhausen, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, if you you know if you're going to release the Kraken right afterwards, then go for it. It was funny too because Poseidon was wa was walking. Now, this is one of the things I don't like about the movies. Like they just don't try to draw the lines between like the Greek mythology world in the real world. I mean, it's just crossing over here and there and nobody seems to notice. So like when Poseidon just opened up the movie walking like 50 feet tall yeah. and then he changes in the water to like change to normal size. There's a, there's a fisherman on a bridge looking at him and I was thinking, okay, that fisherman is going to pull out a bottle of whiskey yeah, and throw dropping. it over his shoulder. <laughs> oh, see, th this is what you don't understand, dude. This is why they set the movie in New York City. Because in New York City, big-ass things can walk out of the water, and they just think it's because of the sewage. I no, know. it's true. I've been there a lot. It happens all the time. Yeah. I was waiting for the Ghostbusters to show up. <laughs> you know? oh, oh, the Cloverfield monster. Yeah. Because yeah, I saw that the, the last time I visited. Right? Even the Cloverfield monster was like, I've seen everything. <laughs> yeah. I saw him, too. He was buying a newspaper, getting a cup of coffee in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is based on a series of books, just like Harry that Potter. Were based on yeah, Harry yeah. Potter. Yeah, and you know, this is 20th Century Fox really trying to start another franchise of movies just like Harry Potter. Can't blame them. That, Harry Potter is a license to print money. And no, and a, and a lot of people have tried, and they failed. And this, uh, I don't know about this one either. The, the story here deals with uh, young Percy Jackson, who discovers that he's a demigod. His father is Poseidon, the god of water or whatever, or that boat <laughs> that's sunk in that ship I mean, you, you in that movie. You didn't take mythology. 
psychology in school. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, what do you mean? I just took a big lesson tonight. I wasn't accurate. <laughs> and uh, but while his mother is just plain old Catherine Keener. So this would be cool if the god of all Greek gods, Zeus, didn't accuse Percy of stealing his special effect lightning bolt. Right. So now his his neon glow stick. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. Zeus is like, I have missed rave after rave because I don't have that lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> it shall not Damn stand. It. Zeus uh, must get his groove on. I'm just left with these fairy wings. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but Where's now, my glitter? Yeah. So <laughs> so Percy is like he's caught in a world of trouble here. Hades steals his mom, who also wants the lightning bolt for himself. So. Percy's considered this big lightning thief, so now he has to go and find out what the big deal is with this lightning bolt while trying to save his mother, at the same time trying to prevent this all-out war among the gods. So. Yeah, and traveling along with him is uh, a couple of sidekicks. You got the daughter of Athena and... And a black goat man. And, yeah, and, and, a, and a jive-talking <laughs> black satyr. Now, I've read the books. Um, you guys want to guess if uh, that character Grover was a jive-talking black sidekick? You mean he wasn't baby? <laughs> Wait, are you serious? They really, they're like, you know what we need here? We need some job. That, that's exactly what they did. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm, I'm dead serious. Sad. Because he's not funny here at all. No. In no. fact, he is the weakest link in this film, I think. It's embarrassing watching him. He's just kind of shuffling and jiving well, through I, the whole thing. I don't know if he's the weakest link as much as the dialogue in yeah. this film is the weakest mm-hmm. link. This is, the thing about this film is, uh, that makes it different from Harry Potter is Harry Potter, the first, uh, one had very stilted dialogue. In which it's trying to explain a lot of new, different ideas to you. Cre- uh, she was busy creating her own mythology and trying to explain it to you. So explaining t- it as if you were explaining it to a child actually works even for adults. Here, they're explaining the basic tenets of Greek mythology, which most of us learned in high school. And it's really boring, really trite, and just really lame to hear these g- these descriptions just spill out of these characters' mouths trying to move the plot along. It's not really that exposition that bothers me, though. I think the reason I say that the satyr is the, the most boring is because the comedy just doesn't work. The guy, whoever wrote this, can't write comedy because it's not funny, and nothing's more embarrassing than a joke when there's not an ounce of funny to it. Well, I would say trite is the is the operative word here because, you know, read, read the book. It's enjoyable. I mean, it is it's definitely Harry Harry Potter light. No, no, no doubt about it. If you want to, you know, you let's say like, hey, I want to get in that Harry Potter mood, but I don't want to make a big investment. It's a great book to read. But here he's taken Harry Potter light and made it. Chris Columbus has made it Harry Potter lighter. And he makes the same mistakes he did with the first two Harry Potter movies where it's like, OK, I have all the elements that are there except a reason to care about these characters and then by the time you get to the third act he just threw the book away well, like, uh, everything that happens in the third act and I'm like really because that's the best part of the movie yeah, the, oh, what, the, the, the big comic book fight that happens well, see actually well, once actually, it starts the, moving I thought it was a pretty fun movie yeah the, the, the part not you're the comic book fight in the middle of two really great sequences. That was that's the part where I was kind of like, eh. But I love everything that happens in Hades, and then I love everything when we get up to Olympus and kind of get the the perspective on how things are working up in Olympus. Oh, really? I like it when they took ecstasy and went to the rave in Vegas. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. That was that was yeah. pretty <laughs> fucked up. No, it, this see what works about this movie is that it moves fast. And this doesn't really slow down, but that's also the thing that doesn't work for exactly. this movie because, I mean, when Percy, who's played, what's that kid's name? Uh, Logan Learman? Lehman? Uh, Lerman? L- Logan can't act his way out of a paper bag. Well, nobody could in well, this movie except it, for a few people. But, I mean, if this, this kid's going to be Spider Man, we are in deep <laughs> shit. It's moving so fast that Percy Jackson. He doesn't have any sense of wonder about what's happening to him. When he starts to realize that he's the son of a god and he's taken to this mythical world, I mean, he doesn't seem shocked or surprised or in wonder about it at all. And that's because this movie is moving so fast. And like I said, this whole thing with this, uh, you know, them trying to combine the Greek mythology mythology, mythology along with the real world is just not happening. I mean, they're trying to combine it with like, the hipness of teenagers who just seem to have a, this attitude of like everything is like, yeah. oh wow, that's cool. And then on top of that, there's just it's clumsy the way they try to combine the two. In addition to like people seeing these gods walking around and nobody's reporting on it or anything, they also Percy. 
I mean, he knows he's the son of a god. He can read Greek. I mean, he seems to have all these instincts, but yet he doesn't know basic Greek mythology. He doesn't know, like, the head of Medusa, even when it's cut off, will turn something to stone. He doesn't know that cutting well, off the head of a hydra will actually, like, produce two more. I mean, that seems very sloppy to me. Well, that's because in this universe, Clash of the Titans doesn't exist, Corey. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay. let's, let's be honest here. The problem, one of the main problems with this film is the fact that it pulls from so many different sources and so many different weird sources. It's not just straight mythology. It's also pop culture mythology. And it, it pulls from we, – we, there's bits from Perseus. There's bits, bits from uh, Hercules. There's uh, bits from the Orpheus story. I mean, it really does pull from all the major Greek myths, but oh, it, it, the, in the most watered-down ways. I mean, like, there's a whole scene where he's fighting Medusa, and you're like, okay, if you know Medusa, you know you can stare at a reflection. So he pulls out his iPhone. I was like, this could be cool if he's using his camera on his iPhone, and then the other kids could have iPhones, and they, like, map her position. Yeah, then it becomes stuff. a big iPhone and then it's commercial. Just, but there's just a reflection of, like, the back of the iPhone. I was like, well, that's kind of dumb. This, what was the point of even pulling that thing so, out? So, so, so you can see the logo. To see the logo. Yeah. I know, I know. I get that. But I'm just saying, if you're going to do it, have fun with it. Make I, it where, like, wow, you're using technology that you're familiar with as a kid who grew up in the w- regular world against Olympian gods. That might have been fun to watch. They want to make this epic in some kind of way. But yet they have, like, these set pieces, like the Garden of Medusa is Bob. A Greyhound bus stop. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, I, you know, this isn't really working for me. It's it's these kind of things that that work really well in the book. And, and reading the book, it's almost like a small version of um, Neil Gaiman's uh, American Gods. It just works on that same kind of thing of weaving these myths into our modern world. But on screen, it's like, yeah, it, on one hand, it wants to be epic, and on the, the other hand, it wants to be a fastly told kid story with a small budget. I mean, there are points that I think it's really entertaining, but most of that stuff happens as it goes on. It gets its own ground towards the end. It's like, okay, this is the stuff that wasn't in those stories, and that's actually kind of fun to well, watch. How do you know? They don't really. They overlook things. I mean, they're moving so fast that just big things that are just standing there. They don't try to explain. I mean, yeah. they turn a creature into a, into stone, a huge, big ass creature, and they just in the middle of a museum and they just leave it there and like nobody explains that you know right. who's, when maybe, somebody finds that the next morning what, how are they going to explain that maybe the second movie will be called Percy Jackson and the holy shit what the fuck is that <laughs> 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 yeah. you know you talk about a second film but the one thing you have to give credit to this movie for is they don't try to leave the ending with wait for our next adventure the the whole movie does wrap up and you don't feel like anything was left dangling for another film that's never going to happen I noticed that because uh, that was the mistake a lot of these movies that try to be another Harry Potter franchise they they are just so confident like, like the Golden this, Compass the Golden, they're <laughs> yeah. just so confident that oh this is going to be the next one this is it we're going to leave it on cliffhanger and bring you back and the studio says bitch no <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make money. Move on to the next day. Get Percy Jackson on the phone. But I, it's uh, you know I'm complaining about a lot of things in the movie. But like I said, the strength of the film is that it moves along very fast. And you know what? Uh, I might complain about them trying to combine Greek mythology with modernism. But it's like those monsters look really cool. I, I really did have fun with the special effects. I was like, you know something? I really can't complain about the monsters in here. Yeah, I could say that these are cheap special effects, but they don't look cheap. I mean, everything else in the movie looks cheap. That's why they look so bad, like the stuff that doesn't have monsters in them, because those special effects just seem to dwarf everything else. It's inconsistent, where you have some that look great and some that don't. That is true, yeah. Like the Harpy, for instance, looked terrible. At the beginning? Yeah, yeah, and I thought the the Hydra, sometimes it looked good in some shots, and others it just looked totally fake. But when you get to see Hell, that shit looked cool. Oh, yeah, no, that did. (laughs) Uh, and and when we say hell, we mean Rosario Dawson. <laughs> oh, well, that didn't hurt. <laughs> Watching her walking around in her bustier, licking her lips at anything well, with a dick. Oh, okay, I don't understand. Like 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 the Seder where she's all like, come here, you stay with me. And he's looking scared. I'm like, dude, what you looking scared for? Because you hit, she's you gonna, hit the jackpot. She's going to tear him apart. Yeah. You know what you want. <laughs> no, you know why? No. I, t- no. I tell you why he was looking scared. Because she was black. All the, oh, all, all the oh. white chicks in the movie, he was all like, hey, girl, what's up? But that black chick came up. He was like, oh, I've got to get the fuck out of here. Oh, shit. You're not, <laughs> not going to buy my, my cute jive <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's Brandon T. Jackson, who was uh, the only black guy, who the, the real black guy in Tropic Thunder. Yeah. And you know what? Which I'm like, okay, how, how old is this guy? Is he, is he 18 or is he uh, you know, 28? Uh, what is it in a, uh, in a sadder year? It's like, what, 15 years or something like that for every one year <laughs> in human years? He's a high school student one minute and he's middle-aged the next. Well, man, you know what? Like, I did not like that character at all. I mean, he pretty much is Bagger Vance for, yeah. <laughs> for Percy yeah. Jackson. And, you know, I'm just thinking, like, and they, they, they – 
they have to make this brother go. Everybody is heroic in the movie except for him. I was, ex- I mean, there's a scene where he actually <laughs> he eats an aluminum can. <laughs> and I was just like, "Fuck you, man!" I was expecting just like while Percy Jackson's talking, he's just nibbling on his shirt, and Percy just like, "Get the fuck off me, man! What are you doing?" Hey, they could have made it a grape soda can. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, th- I think it was Orange Crush. It was Orange Crush. <laughs> you know, it was, like, it was halfway there. <laughs> well, well, don't forget the scene where he, he gets everybody up to do the Harlem Shuffle on the dance. And floor. that's what I was gonna say, man. It's yeah. like this movie is trying to be. Uh, see, uh, a film uh, like this, it, can, it should be able to get by just on the strength of its story alone you tell me that book is good and i saw a good story in there yeah i, I just told i saw it told badly and i also saw it trying to fit too many I mean, hip things in there he that fool is out there dancing doing he's at the line dancing with goat legs to lady gaga and i'm like man this is ridiculous but you know what I, the moment he came on i saw that he had those goat legs i was like wow this is a really cool special effect here i thought that that was pretty you know amazing. what the, the the centaur effects have come a long way because, like, what the last time I saw him was Harry Potter, where you're like, uh, yeah, eh, so good. But now, you know, Pierce Brosnan as a centaur looked pretty damn good. Well, you know, it's, that's what was getting me about the movie. It's like, there's only two people that I like in this film. And that is the kid that played Luke. I think his name is Jake Abel uh-huh. and Steve Coogan in the movie. Hell I like yeah. I yeah. like those he's two. He's not in it anywhere near long enough. No, he's not. I, I, you know see, what? I, I, I thought he felt really out of place in the whole Did thing. you? Yeah. I, I enjoyed him. I was like, finally, somebody who can act in here. And not that I'm saying that no one else could act. I just don't think that they were directed very well, well he, again, because the story was moving so fast. It's a character who was supposed to be full of menace, and he was m- full of comic relief. Yeah, but he was also – it also kind of brought it down a bit in, in a way. He was the one thing that felt authentic in the film, like here's a god aged 2,000 years and living in this era. And and that, that did translate to me, and that, that worked. And I really dug that whole kind of – I'm – I'm the ugliest of the gods, uh, you know, short of Vulcan. Um, so how uh, am I going to be a god on Earth? I'm going to play rock music. Yeah, I'm where gonna, any <laughs> ugly god can get. Yeah. And, and yeah. that great mo- there's, there's that great moment where he's like, "You would you rather I look like this?" And you're like, "No, no, no, it's it's cool. Go back to <laughs> yeah, go, go back to like like douchebag. Like yeah. I'll take the douchebag over the demon." Persephone, what could possibly be taking so long? <laughs> Don't ignore me. Or what? What will you do? I'm already in hell. Welcome. You're Hades? Yes. Oh, sorry, I just didn't... I didn't expect you to look like this, man. Kind of stylish. I like it. (laughs) Would you prefer that I looked like this? And, uh, and apparently in Hades, there's a hot topic somewhere with Steve, <laughs> right. Steve Coogan shot. Where do you think the first one opened at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, is, that is where they're from. Oh, was that the original? <laughs> yeah. That's why I like how Poseidon was kind of straddling both worlds. Like, I'm, I'll wear the, the Olympian garb, but I have my supercuts hairdo. And, and, a, and like a nice stylish hoodie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you a know. A trim goatee. Hey, if you're going to be a god, wear some good clothes. I was going to say, they're going to come down to Earth. It's not like he's going to show up with some like shiny disco shirt on or something. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! But, but, I mean, the way they have it, it's almost like they download into the Matrix, <laughs> right? Well, you know, maybe that's how they look at it, man. Maybe that's what the second movie is like. They're all just from Cyrus. the real He's second the movie, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> but see, that's the thing about this movie, man. The, the acting in this is just—it goes between mugging, overacting, or just over dramatic acting i mean like the people who are playing gods like sean bean who's sean Susie. B, oh, i mean man. when he you know <laughs> he's i mean when they they get on a rooftop and they're just saying these lines like they're, they're doing a, the greatest shakespeare play in the world and i'm just like wow do you know what movie you're in <laughs> well, the, the one that was making me laugh was uh pierce brosnan who was spent most of the movie you know with a horse body he's a centaur and uh He's just, I mean, he's just acting all regal and authoritative. And the whole time I just kept thinking, like, you know what? He's shitting like horses do <laughs> when they're walking down the street. You know, just, <laughs> he he's sitting up there talking. He, he, boom, yep, boom. Young Percy, you are my student. And did you not? Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, he can, he can stand like, with his arms on his, on, you know, with his chest puffed out because he's, he's, got, he's got a big horse cock. <laughs> <laughs> you also have to keep in mind, I mean, 
think think of it. You're Pierce Brosnan. You're pushing like what sixty? Sure. He's up there, and he's still being able to strut around in movies with his shirt off. Yeah. Oh, he's the Corey Coleman of <laughs> movies right now. Uh, Corey's like, not near sixty yet. Let's wait. Yeah, you know. I can have his wait. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> you can take a real downward spiral in the next five years. <laughs> I see him hey, more like an Archie Bunker at that age. I think, I think Corey pushes 60 every chance he gets. Yes. Oh. Oh. And I also just took a shit in my place right here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what there has to be said, though? As far as the Fox fantasy adaptations go, this is the best one so far. Yeah, I tell you, man, was something that made me sad is just like the passage of time. Like, at what point was it? I missed it where Catherine Keenan went from this hot piece of ass to playing these broken down moms in every movie now. Well, when we first saw her, she was already like right there at that tail end. Is She's that right? Like she was sitting three pretty close to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> and she hit it right after. Yeah, she was full speed. And then you're a mom. <laughs> hey, <Sorry>. who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I compared this movie to like that because they have a scene in the film where they're eating lotus flowers and it puts them in a trance and they don't realize the shitty position that they're in. No, we can't, and, we can't talk about that scene, dude. Yeah. That's in Vegas. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, whatever happens. Whatever you eat in Vegas stays in Vegas. And if you eat a lotus flower, you do stay in Vegas. But, yeah. uh, but you know, I compare this movie to, to kind of like that. I mean, I know that this story in this is bad. The acting is bad. And, I mean, Uma Thurman, I thought, was terrible oh. as, Medu- as Medusa. Oh, I thought she was Poison Ivy again. <laughs> I know. I, that's exactly how I can say. She's like, wow, was. she's playing this yeah. exactly she, the same. She got upstaged by those snakes in her hair. She, she yeah. did. I was like, wow. I the snakes look cool, though. They No, they were. Those sometimes, were very cool. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they looked really CG, and sometimes they actually looked neat. When they were interacting and, like, biting other people's faces, it's like, cool, that's something we've never seen before with Medusa. But that was the one thing they did new. Everything else was stolen right out of Clash of the Titans. True. And then they had a uh, stand-in who wore rubber snakes on my head every now and then. No, I was like, I mean, I'm looking at all this and I'm like, you know, by no means should I like any of this because really this is this is really poor. Except the 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 the, the, the like the pacing of the film and the special effects. I it didn't slow down and uh, I had a good time watching those. Um, it's nothing I would really tell people to run out and see, but while I was there, I, I liked it, so I give it a low matinee. Wow, that's funny because I thought you were gonna lo- be a much lower than me because I'm pretty much the same way. I didn't dislike things as much as you did, but at the same time, I was like, it wasn't till three quarters of the way through that I had kind of turned around on it. Go, you know what? I gotta admit, like, despite my problems with this, like the early big sword fight at the school where everyone is scratched at best, yeah. <laughs> you're like, wait, hey, why would you hey. do that? That's just dumb. Despite my, my problems with silly stuff like that along the way, and like, god damn, we've already seen this story when, you know, in Greek mythology, Clash of the Titans, I still ended up kind of having fun with it, especially the whole big last battle, which was pretty freaking cool so yeah it's a low matinee i mean yeah it's percy jackson and the story thief but hey <laughs> it's, it's, it's a camp not a school you don't want the people to get sued no. okay cut them a little slack yeah there's a lot of camp in this movie um you know <laughs> i mean like being the only person here who read it i just you know i i hate that because i i come from that that point of view but just speaking for people who have read it and like can't wait to go see their book put on on film i gotta say the first two thirds i thought was just mediocre it's it's what chris columbus always does i was actually kind of bored but i thought you know what it's an okay adventure and in that last third where all this stuff happens it's like i don't mind when a story gets changed i really don't because i like hey i like seeing a new thing but i hate when the new thing is so much worse than what they had before and this was just it was just so much cotton candy where it's like wow this story actually had a lot of meaning to it where i really enjoyed the end and here just like let's just wrap this up with this stupid comic book fight i i give it a, a high rental Okay. I'm with my man Leon. This is a rental uh, at best. I mean, if you've got kids or you read the books and you're really excited, it's a low, low matinee. But for me, it was a rental. It's There's there's nothing really that drew me in enough to make me want to ever see it again and uh, or to say – tell somebody that they should pay in a theater to see it so yeah it's it's a rental see you know what i think if i brought kids to this they'd love it man of course yeah yeah i mean, yeah, I, but, I mean but, i'm but not I, saying that kids would just even love anything i really do think that this is a, a fun movie for kids but that's it's we think it's a good movie for kids because kids haven't developed the taste to uh uh have to try to forgive or put up with the things that we had to forgive or put up with to like anything about this movie you know what this movie reminded me a lot of race to witch mountain 
just just the same kind of things that this you having the, the fast pace with the action, but also just being kind of man. See, I don't know what it is. I like this better than Witch Mountain. I most certainly do yeah, too. Yeah, Witch Mountain. It, was... it, okay, if there's anything that made me. The, the 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 jokes or the the la- the 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 bad attempts at humor in Witch Mountain were more annoying. But Witch Mountain didn't have monsters like this did. And that's what I would. That's what I liked about this. I mean, you know, like you know, I mean, this is. I see what you're saying. I'm not arguing with you. And this I'm was there. the kind of the lotus flower, like you were trying to say earlier. It's like you sit there and eat it, and you're still like, this is really shallow and it's imitative, and 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 there's nothing new here. And it, but at yeah. the same time, I'm not bored at all. And no. I'm just, I'm like, okay, I'm along for the ride. I'll be fine. I, I will admit this movie, it, 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 it gave me a diversion so, by, from the bad story by looking at all the cool things. I have a question though. I mean, again, they, they cut some major characters out of this thing. I, I didn't the, read the book. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at you, but I'm talking to the audience member <laughs> who hears this and who read the book. Who read the book. I mean, there are going to be some people who read the books who are listening to us and want to know, well, what's the same? Is this in here? And it's just, there's a, there's some big parts that are cut out that, that changes the whole thing. Okay. I, but here's my question. And going back to like the slappiness of the whole thing, uh, like the uh, Jive Goat was wearing pants. <laughs> goat. That's what he, that is what he is. Yeah, no, you're right. Jive, that's Just what be is. thankful his, his bottom wasn't a bird. Uh, but Jive Turkey, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what they should make him in the next movie. <laughs> okay, baby, I just went all out with it. <laughs> but you know He's uh, the cock on the block. <laughs> <laughs> you dig him the most, baby. Oh, shit, I think we just, we've got our next pitch. Just be glad they didn't make this movie 10 years ago. That would have been Chris Turkey. Tucker. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh Tim. <laughs> that is a bad outfit. <laughs> that would have been Chris Tucker ten, 10 years, years ago. ago if they did it. Would have been Chris Tucker doing this. <laughs> Oh Jesus! No. Hey, he would have been—he would have been running around, kicking everything. Man, man! Percy Jackson, Percy Jackson, man! Percy Jackson, Percy, Percy, come yeah. here for me. What are we gonna do? We gonna die? <laughs> Zeus just knocked you the fuck out. <laughs> Zeus tiny listing that is. <laughs> but you know, it's my lightning bolt, punk. <laughs> But, but I you want know, to see that movie all the time. I, change, I totally changed my mind. Well, it, that's what they should do. They should bring Greek mythology to to uh, South Central. <laughs> What's Greek for Friday? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Greek Friday. You know? But you know, so Jive Goat is wearing jeans to cover up his legs, right? But Pierce Brosnan was in a wheelchair. I'm like, where's he hiding? His his body, you know, he's he's a horse. Why is he hiding this under magic? magic. Oh, really? Yes. Well, yeah, come on, you're gonna have a hard time buying that. I know. I, I just thought that was magic. magic. Everything else is so plausible. This big <laughs> lightning toothpick, the gods, and, and this, this this geeky douchebag getting like I a penis starter and, <laughs> and, and lotus flowers that? that make you forget years have gone by. That's all so plausible. Where, but where, where's he hiding the fucking horse? Where would a centaur get magic? From? <laughs> I don't know. I just, it's just so I, plausible. No, I, don't I don't believe it. That's how I, messy this film is. I just, I just see him like in the handicapped parking space, and him getting a ticket, and then looking at him, and he has like the wheelchair over, trying to cover up the rest of his horse body. And the guy's like, "Really? Are you serious?" <laughs> Pierce Brothers like. Yeah, I'm handicapped. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, sorry. 